Hello and welcome everybody to today's app growth point. Today we'll be discussing multi-channel mobile marketing. I can see there are lots of people starting to join our virtual room, it's starting to get very, very busy. I'm very, very excited. And I want to say we've got an amazing topic we have today. As I mentioned, multi-channel mobile marketing, increasing the user acquisition and engagement in 2023. I hope you're as excited as I am. And um, I'm really happy to be here at Split Metrics and be able to provide this insightful educational webinar today. Before we get started, I'd like to gauge the audience. Okay, so we've got a couple of people more coming in. What I'd like you to do is put in the chat, let me know where you're coming in from. What part of the world are you joining from today? Hopefully some people are joining from Dublin, Ireland, where I'm from, but I wanna see that chat. Let's go. So please put your details into the chat, everybody. Thank you very, very much. Austin, Texas, I love it. London, Warsaw, great. Poland, London, multi-channel, yes. Bucharest, Lebanon, great, great, great. And we have more people coming in. This is excellent. Barcelona, love it. Barcelona, excellent, great. But look, listen, welcome. Delighted to have you all here today. And we're very excited that you could join us too and take some time out of your busy schedule. So my name is David Martin. I am VP of sales here at Split Metrics. And as you know, Split Metrics is a global company offering ecosystem of enterprise grade products and services that enable mobile first businesses and brands worldwide to simplify their way to business success. An Apple Search Ads partner with a dedicated team of 150 experts who live and breathe mobile app growth. Split Metrics is obsessed, as you know, with making its customers successful. And that's why top app and gaming publishers choose to grow with our team. So as we know, the digital world is evolving at a fast pace and consumers' mobile usage is growing. The average mobile user spent four to five hours a day in apps. That's amazing. Crazy. Okay, they have more than 80 apps installed. And still 50% of their time spent on social networks, I think, of its preferred channel to socialize and get information. Millennials are eager to use Insta, Gen Z, TikTok, and as app publishers and developers want to see their businesses grow, marketers should develop a proper multi-channel mobile marketing strategy to reach relevant clients and different ages from countries as possible and keep them engaged as best results. And we're gonna show you how to do that today, exciting. Uh, to help mobile app publishers and developers and marketers acquire new customers, Users across multi channels and make them loyal. We have invited top leaders and seasoned experts to share their insights, knowledges, and best practices. I'm very, very excited, guys. And we're still obviously getting people coming in. So excellent. Great to see. So I will be your host of today's App Grow Point. And I will want to induce, introduce a stellar lineup that we have here today. Okay. We've got Megan White. VP of Marketing at Mo Engage. She leads the North American Marketing and Sales Development Team there. She has more than a decade of marketing leadership experience with Ameritech customer experience, content management sectors, managing marketing strategies and various functions, including demand generation, email marketing, digital marketing, product marketing, and communication. She is very, very, very much welcome. And I hope Megan has been able to join us today. Megan, are you here? Not yet. But don't worry, because you've got even more of a stellar lineup for you as well. And if I go into, obviously, our next slide, you will see who the beautiful and wonderful people are. Okay, we have Maxim and Karina. Hello, Maxim, how are you? Hello, Karina, how are you? So let me give you both a brief intro into who these wonderful people are, and I'm going to pass the floor to them, okay? Maxim has 13 years experience of successful marketing experience, okay, including five years in the gaming industry and five years experience in the mobile app industry. As you can see, very, very experienced. As a user acquisition team lead, he helps large and medium-sized mobile app publishers drive app installs, hit KPIs, and grow apps at scale. Maxim, good to have you here, man. 
Hi there. Hey, David. Thanks for the warm intro. It's my pleasure to be here today. And I'm looking, for, looking forward to a great discussion. Hi, team. Likewise, okay. likewise, likewise. Thank you, Maxim. And now I'm going to go over to Karina. Karina has four years working experience in split metrics in her current role. She helps app publishers of all sizes to find the best tailored growth strategy, maintaining KPIs, scaling user acquisition campaigns for profitability, and boosting ROI easier and faster with split metrics ecosystem of products, which we're going to learn more about today. Karina's key focus is to provide the clients with high quality result oriented um, results, and she's a dedicated team associated for that. Now, before we do go any further, I can see Megan has just joined us. Megan, how are you? Hey, everyone. Um, thank you for having me today. Absolute pleasure to have you, Megan. And uh, we're looking forward to the session with you all. So thank you very much. Okay. So, guys and girls, before we dig in deeper into the topic, and I give the floor to these stellar, amazing speakers, I'd like to cover a few points. Okay. Our experts prepared their presentations to share their wisdom with you. Okay. While they're doing that, please feel free to submit, obviously, in the chat your comments or questions that you have. We want to make this as interactive as possible. And we want to make sure you get as much insights, as much education from this today to help you within your strategies going forward, okay? And either of our panelists, yep, yeah, okay. What we'll do is we'll cover the questions um, in the session and we'll try to answer them throughout the session. If not, we will follow up, obviously, with this um, recording and with obviously answers to your questions too. So, I'd like to warm up the audience. Okay, so we're going to start a little poll here. Okay, so we want to make the webinars as interactive as possible, as I mentioned, okay? So here is our first poll to get you going, ladies and gentlemen. So as you can see, poll number one. What multi-channel user acquisition challenges have you experienced? We're going to give the audience a couple of more minutes and seconds to do this. Okay, okay. Please, please, please get your answers. We've got more people coming in. And what we're going to do is we're going to share the results of the poll during the live broadcast, okay? So a couple of more seconds, a couple of more seconds before we do, okay? Let me find out who the winner, winner, chicken dinner is, okay? So please be voting. Please vote. Please vote. Okay. Now, without any further ado, I'm going to pass you over. To the wonderful team, team, thank you very, very much for your time. Audience, thank you very much for your participation. Let's have a great multi-channel webinar. Let's get interactive, you know, and let's obviously get some insights. Thank you very much. Over to the team. So, let's begin. Um, first of all, thank you, David, for this bright start and warm up. Um, as I mentioned, we at the uh, Agency help our customers grow their business uh, through well-developed multi-channel US strategy, among other, uh, among many other things, of course. Um, as you know, user interacts with your brand um, across multiple channels, and it is crucial to understand uh, how they behave um, across all marketing channels and what their value is. So, um, multi-channel UA uh, marketing is no longer an option, uh, but rather a must. Today, we'll share uh, our expertise and cover the latest trends and challenges that we see and what approach can be used uh, to determine the most, the most effective uh, channel mix. So, uh, and I would like to start with the um, uh, top 2022-2023 trends in the mobile market. Uh, I can say that the world is changing as well as um, customer behavior. Uh, it means that in order to succeed, you need to keep uh, keep an eye on the industry trends. So that's why we start by going through the key ones. The first trend is related to uh, today's post-COVID world. First of all, I'm happy to say that um, we're getting to back uh, getting back to our normal life, uh, where we go out, study, work, travel, meet with uh, um, our friends, etc. But on the other hand, the digital boom that took place in 2020, 2021, um, the growth of the gaming market, health and fitness, education apps, 
it begins to decline and it's the right time for the advertiser to uh, to start making changes uh, you should take uh, you should take into account uh, that people are returning from the digital world to the real one to the real one and even if you do not see any significant drops you shouldn't expect uh, the app download uh, or revenue increase increase will stay on the same level as well so the next important things I think that uh, affected all advertisers, of course, who promoted apps on the App Store, is the Apple Privacy Policy Update. And these changes had a significant impact on the entire iOS marketing uh, market. Um, everything has changed. Um, understanding of which channels to proceed or which channels to turn off, approaches to choosing channels or created, uh, result analysis methods, etc. Um, I can say that approach, um, the, more you, the more you spend, the more you own, doesn't work anymore. Uh, it's important now to understand, uh, or better to say, predict how builds revenue streams. Um, in our reality, user acquisition is getting more expensive because the process of acquiring, tracking, and analyzing the results becomes more complicated. I'd like to say that uh, the mobile user acquisition um, becomes similar to old school marketing where um, when we cannot correctly calculate the effectiveness of such a channel uh, as tv radio newspaper uh, but focus on our experience uh, our intuition market research uh, and that minimum of information uh, that we possess so as a result uh, kpis um, are being tightened budgets are reducing and at the same time the cost of failure increased so now the budget uh, should be taking, taking into account um, the limited data we have and uh, should be should be allocated in such a way so that the maximum profit can be achieved. And based on this, uh, based on these trends, um, we should accept the fact uh, that the mobile market is probably the most the most dynamic and rapidly changing market. We are constantly facing some kind of innovations, limitations. Um, audience changes, competition growth, etc. And uh, it's crucial to be flexible and quickly, ad quickly adapt to new changes. Uh, moreover, advertisers should integrate all the changes, trends, and new technologies into um, user acquisition or in marketing in general. And uh, let's proceed with uh, the main trend uh, that we see now is the usage of AI. Now, all of you see that creative and the thousand text um, that created are using AI. It helps uh, because, uh, because it helps to write slogans, captions, content, and many more. Um, as a result, we see many discussions uh, around the topic of, of whether it, it will replace user acquisition manager or not. In my opinion, it's more about the interaction between AI and uh, user acquisition manager than the confrontation. Because uh, AI has a lot of strengths that make it quite promising uh, tools in the near future, like big data, cutting edge technologies, uh, strong algorithms based on a huge number of um, signals and user actions, uh, the ability to segment audience more granularly than uh, we usually do. And all these can easily speed up the processes. But at the same time, uh, user acquisition manager has a lot of strengths uh, as well like uh, huge knowledge base and experience. <clears throat> um, strong understanding of how to work with advertising uh, and marketing tools in general. Uh, he has out of, think out of the box thinking, uh, which is not available to AI, and I hope never be. Um, understanding of how to communicate with the user. Uh, and he also has a knowledge of, um, of the product and its uh, target audience because uh, AI can't feel the user. It can put itself in the user's shoes, understand his real pain and needs. And uh, I can say that AI needs someone, someone like user acquisition manager who can give it all these uh, inputs and point it in the right direction. So by delegating manual work and some time consuming routine tasks to AI, uh, you can devote more time to the US strategy development, creating and testing uh, new hypotheses, searching for a new solution to achieve better results. And as a result of this, of such powerful combo of user acquisition manager and AI, you could get app growth, 
uh, meeting the KPIs, ROIs, uh, positive campaigns, scaling, which you can, uh, which you couldn't get without AI, uh, as our resources are limited. By the way, as a result of user acquisition manager, business analyst, and AI cooperation, media mix modeling can be developed. Uh, this tool will allow you to measure the impact of um, any marketing force, uh, which marketing force have on the result and determine uh, the best performing channel. And, and I'd like to proceed uh, with, and I to proceed with the uh, next uh, part of our presentation. Moving um, on to our next topic, I'd like to discuss, uh, discuss, it is the most burning uh, topic nowadays. We hear lots of uh, questions from our clients about how to find the best performing channels, um, how to combine them to create a proper mar uh, marketing or media mix. Uh, first thing you should remember that the approach, this channel worked before, so we'll use it again, won't help you achieve any substantive result. You should be more flexible, more sm uh, smarter, <laughs> and use an, um, use an approach that allows you to choose the most appropriate uh, channel for each product, for each market, for each audience, etc. And now I'd like to share a step-by-step -step guide uh, that will help you understand which UA channels uh, will perform to maximum for you. First of all, uh, first of all, try to understand what your business or marketing goals and KPIs are. Then consider the stage of the product life, uh, product life cycle uh, to decide which channels to use first. For example, uh, for soft launch, uh, the channels, countries, budget uh, will be different from multi push campaigns because you need to acquire a small number of cheap users in order to understand how the product works, uh, get user feedback, and then enhance the product based on this information. Uh, while at the growth stage, you need to use all available uh, tools, channels to expand your reach expand your results. After you acquire new users, your task is to keep them engaged and convert them into paying customers. And uh, our colleagues from More Engaged will tell you a lot more about this. So uh, next you should look um, at the available budget. No, not all channels um, are suitable for low budget campaigns and vice versa. Not all channels have the ability, to, to, the ability for scaling uh, in case of large budget. For example, you can uh, test the app in channels where you can quickly uh, quickly collect metrics and then add other channels for scaling. So you also have to analyze the market. Uh, the markets where you like to run uh, paid ads because the cost of user acquisition in the United States, for example, will be different from India uh, or China. Uh, at the same time, you should understand uh, that the traffic quality, user behavior, uh, will be different as well. Um, so you should be always looking for a balance in cost uh, of acquisition and profitability, testing different countries, different channels, different tools and regions. Uh, next, you should always try to understand who your targeting audience, target audience is. Uh, user interact, interact with uh, a lot of different media sources every day. You need to uncover which channels these users prefer to use and meet them there. Um, do not forget that demographic ratio and consumption pattern in each channel will be different. Uh, and as a result, target audience interaction with the creatives uh, and your message will be different as well. And when you know your target audience, uh, this allows you to develop communication strategy. I mean, uh, what and how you should say to the user to make them uh, start using your app. And another important point that you should remember is the ability to track the result. It is crucial, you, uh, crucial for you to understand um, if you can evaluate the impact of each selected channel on the overall result. Uh, or for example, you need to think about, um, uh, think about testing channels separately, step-by-step step, uh, or in different countries. And finally, you should check what creatives you have. This may affect the start date as you need time for creative production.
and we wouldn't be true marketers if we didn't conduct market research to better understand the market, the competitive environment, the uh, product abilities and opportunities. And first of all, you should research key competitors, find and research them, who they are, what functionality their app has, um, what market uh, share they have, what advantages of or USP their app have, has. Mm, then uh, you should understand what the key markets are. There you should analyze where there is a demand for uh, your product, um, in which countries competitors apps are available, uh, where the market capacity is larger, and uh, where the competition is lower. So you should understand um, as well who the target audience of your competitors is. Sometimes you could think that uh, your app is for people, for example, under 30. Uh, but from analyzing the competitors, the creators, you could understand that they are targeting an older audience, uh, and the, at, and this insight can be can be used as a, as a signal to review your strategy, your channels, creative and messages. So multi-channel user acquisition approach help you to help you bring separate campaigns together in, uh, into a single strategy to attract new users using the unique strands of specific channels. Uh, it's also important to understand that all these steps will allow you to choose a, choose a proper channel mix to start with. However, uh, you should be as flexible as possible. Uh, the best strategy requires constant, constant uh, improvement. So uh, do, not forget, do not forget to track your results um, and review the chosen strategy uh, when it's necessary. Uh, when you are tracking your results, you can see what channels are the best performing ones and focus on them then. So, and by doing so, you'll find the most effective channel mix and ultimately uh, achieve better results. So I think that's all from my side. I give the floor to Karina to cover the next part of the topic. Thank you. Yeah, hey, Maxim. Totally, thank you so much for sharing all these insights, deep dive into the multi-channel user acquisition, definitely insightful. And I think that all now in the chat just inspired of studying this multi-channel user acquisition. So definitely I will cover more about the challenges, how to solve them. But before that, I'm really curious about the results of the poll. So Ivan, Tim, can you please share the results? Oh, good. So I see that top leader is just finding a proper channel mix. And same, we heard a lot about the clients as well. There's an attribution tracker. Yes, I'm sorry, Kai Merton. Great. Thank you so much for voting. Uh, I'll definitely try to cover more about these challenges. But right now on the screen, you see the extended list of these challenges. And we hear a lot from our client that they are running, for example, Facebook ads, Google ads, Apple search ads. But then they come to the idea that they do this in separate ways. So they uh, have the user acquisition team for Facebook, Google ads, but it's not kind of multi-channel approach. But when they decided to start it, first challenge, finding the proper channel mix. We have a lot of channels and how to understand, should you start with this or that, or maybe Facebook, or should you combine? And how to make the strategy in this way that these channels mm, like don't compete, but they complement each other. And for sure, um, sometimes when you have all these channels like separated, you can deliver different brand message and it's really important uh, be because you can just mislead your users yeah, if you don't uh, deliver in a consistent brand message. And for sure, by the end of the day, most important challenge, I think, is just to how to understand, should you say no to this channel, how to understand the results, okay, you have some performance and what to do with that. Uh, and how to understand what KPIs you should rely on. And the last point here, but I guess it should be definitely resonating, is about to, how to produce the high converting creatives. And you can see here the note that high performing creatives can be like 70% of success. Yeah, so definitely for your channels, especially it's like Facebook, Google Ads, uh, creatives are the key. But what if I say that you can solve a couple of these challenges by using one word and approach of ecosystem? So on this slide, you can see kind of step back and you can see multi-channel as a part of your app growth 
efforts, like global strategy, kind of helicopter view. And what you can see here is that you definitely should align all your efforts that you have. Um, for example, you have social media ads, good. Multi-channel, also good. But you definitely should align it with your ASO strategy as well with your designers in order to have the brand message that you definitely need to deliver with the help of multi-channel marketing. And I can say this is the first step you need to do, yeah, just to align your teams um, just to succeed in multi-channel as well. But narrowing down the focus, I'd like to focus on the approach to how to start with multi-channel user acquisition. I know that maybe uh, you're already working on Facebook ads, Google ads, or maybe any other uh, channels. But as Maxim has already shared a lot about this research, but I can say that you cannot skip this. You definitely need to thoroughly understand your app, your competitors, your market, because you cannot just pick the channel that can be kind of popular because you cannot succeed in that. But you should understand what is the idea of your app, what you'd like to deliver to your users. And in this way, taking, to, taking into account all the peculiarities of the channel, you can decide on how to prepare this global strategy. Yes, a strategy of this uh, channel mix. And I do suggest you definitely to collaborate your teams, your user acquisition, ASO team, design teams. They all should work on one organism because even in this case, you can definitely succeed in your ASO efforts, multi-channel efforts, and your just brand in general, your app in general. And here, I think a lot of questions can be about channel testing, yeah, because you should remember that when you start running any channel, you should wait a bit. You should test the channel properly. You should understand the goals and the KPIs you'd like to hit with this channel and just don't give up. Try different hypotheses, different tactics. Um, and you can play around the creatives or maybe extend into new markets, but definitely keep testing. And you should put focus on this testing period as well. And you should understand your, as I mentioned, KPIs and performance, because it's really important in order to uh, like make the database decision. Not just, for example, this channel is not popular anymore, but maybe there is a huge potential in this channel, but you just need to keep going, yeah, keep testing. And one more, I think this is point is really important. It's about the creatives, because sometimes I know that uh, you can produce your creatives like, okay, this is something that can be popular, or maybe users can like this image from my point of view. Yes, yeah, so I can produce. But you should understand that your creatives is a source of data. Definitely, you can get a lot of, of this. And I'd like just to share a quick notes about the creatives and how you can work with them uh, in this multi-channel user acquisition. For example, everything starts with forming the hypothesis. And at this stage, you already should understand all the peculiarities of your audience, all the bottlenecks. Um, for sure, you can look at the competitors, yeah, just to get a lot of inspiration, maybe yeah, ideas and references. But once you they clearly understand your brand message you deliver through all the channels, you can start prepare your creatives. Here, once again, your user acquisition uh, specialist can be a good way to collaborate with designers to provide some ideas about the hypothesis, to how to produce the creatives, should it be static or video and so on. And I guess Maxim as well shared about the markets. It's really important to take into account market peculiarities, especially if you'd like to um, go worldwide, for example, you definitely need to understand what specific is this or that market has. And for example, if, if we speak about latest trends as well. And then the main important part, it's about the results. Even if your creative just failed, you definitely can get a lot of from that. You should understand maybe it was kind of messy for the users, or maybe uh, you should try another hypothesis like totally different. So definitely keep going, keep testing the hypothesis, and it definitely will get a huge impact on your multi-channel. And here, just one more point, more numbers. Uh, I'm not going just to announce all these numbers, but just the main idea of this slide is just video content is boosted. So you can see here that 80% of people is preferred video. And it means that, for example, 
I guess that if you're running TikTok or Facebook, you've already tried the video. For sure, it can be kind of the main part of the channel. But try this. Maybe it can be a good chance for you to boost your um, results of your channels. And definitely it can work. Yeah. So it's something that um, kind of later, uh, latest trend on the market. But wrapping up the conversation, I'd like to point that um, um, right now we don't have a lot of time due to the competition, due to the fast growing market, and we definitely know to have the expertise. Yeah, just not to do kind of guessworking, but we definitely need to know where to go. So if you need any help, you can see like happy faces of our team at this slide, but definitely if you need any help, if not managing the channel, but if you need any advice on how to prepare the strategy, how to go to this multi-channel world, definitely you can drop me a line, you can drop us a line, or maybe just uh, paste your email in the chat and we'll get back to you and definitely help you to succeed in this multi-channel journey. Yes, yeah, so um, just wrapping up, I'm just really happy to pass the floor to um, our partner from More Engaged, Megan. But before that, um, Evan Tim, can you please um, launch the multi-channel engagement uh, challenges, Paul? Yeah, that's great. So thank you so much for attention. And Megan, all eyes on you. Thank you. And, and thank you to the entire team for having me on today. We're really excited about our partnership. and. Um, obviously, acquisition is very important, but just so much is multi-channel engagement. So that's what I'm going to speak with you about today. So I tried to summarize this and defy best practices. Obviously, there are a lot of best practices we could talk about. But if you're just getting started with a multi-channel engagement strategy, you want to think about setting the right foundation for success. So I'll talk about each one of these in the next couple slides, but the summary slide is the first step is to break down silos. And as we all know, there's a lot of data, a lot of tools that we're all using. We talked about the different acquisition mediums as well. And so you need to think about how can I bring all of this information together to get a better holistic understanding of my audience. And so that's all around unification. The third point is making sure that you have access to where your customers are. So there are multiple channels for acquisition. There are also multiple channels for engagement. And are you prepared to be able to engage those users on their preferred channel of choice? And so that brings us to personalization. Personalization, I think, has been a buzzword in marketing for years and years and years, but it is one because it's very important. And there are certain strategies that brands can apply to make sure that they are thinking about the user, what they care about whether that's content, channel of engagement, frequency of messages, there are a lot of different options. And then the last is being able to leverage AI. So AI is part of your marketing tech stack is a, um, I think in many cases, something that brands are starting to utilize. And there are a lot of tools out there that do have AI capabilities. And so we'll talk a little bit about how AI can make you work smarter, not harder. So first step is breaking down the silos. So if you are part of an organization, you likely have different teams within your organization that are managing different things. You may have someone who's responsible just for your web analytics. You may have someone responsible just for mobile analytics. You may have a separate CRM system. And when you think about all these different touch points and even some of the channels that you're engaging with, maybe you have a separate email marketing automation tool from your mobile app marketing tool, right? This can be a little um, daunting for a marketer and not just when it comes to understanding your audiences, but also understanding where that data lives and what's working and what's not working. So when you think about how to break down those silos, first you wanna make sure that you truly understand your customer. And this would mean you want to bring in that data from all these different sources and try to patch that together into a unified single view of the customer. And so this often means integrations. You may have a, a tool like with MoEngage, we have a built-in CDP to our platform. You may be using a separate CDP or a BI tool. You can think about ways to bring in that data so that you can start to get a better sense of your, your customer. And each one of these channel sources on the left, um, for example, email or web browsing data, 
or you know, mobile app data, or even advertising platforms, they all have unique data on your individuals. And sometimes you have individuals that care about only one channel. Other times you may have individuals that are engaging across multiple channels. And so there are different types of data properties that you should start to consider and how you would understand that user. And so user properties are, are often, um, and I'll just go to the next slide so we can we can break that down but you're gonna have different types of property. So user properties are the ones that I think that everyone is most familiar with. It's who is my customer? Who is my user? How old are they? Where do they live? But then you also have this other data that's available to you when you do have people engaging across different channels like campaign interactions. So did they open a push notification and which push notification did they open? Are they, in this case, Sarah just opened a welcome push notification and she's onboarding as part of the platform. Did they engage with the email that was shared to them? Are they opening it? Are they clicking on it? Um, you also might have enriched data. So in the case of Sarah, Sarah is a potential home buyer. And um, for a consumer bank, we would want to make sure that we're sharing information that's relevant to her at her point in the right journey, right? So she recently subscribed to a newsletter, and this is what enriched data is. It's more of action-based, but also starting to form profile information that can later be used for segmentation. Um, she's part of now a champion segment, which means she's engaged enough. She's a new onboarded bank customer. Maybe she's gotten to a specific affinity group where she's had enough money in her bank account to qualify that she's an eligible home buyer. And then you can start to look at some of the user interactions. So we know that Sarah downloaded the app. She's using the mobile app now. She's checking her balance. She's also leveraging the mobile app to search for home loans, visiting home loan pages. This can apply in almost any industry. It could be a retailer that's marketing to a consumer. Now a consumer has maybe purchased a dress and now they're looking to purchase some shoes to complement that dress. So you can apply this to any particular segment that you're in. If you're a gaming company, you may be looking at more of gameplay and, and time user sessions, right? But this is the type of data that you want to start to think about collecting and make sure that you have one central place where you can bring that together. Because if you do want to reach that state of personalization, you do need to understand what are those specific interactions that each individual is taking? And then, of course, what channels do they care about so that you can make sure that you're marketing to them on the right channels that matter? So the third step is around making sure you have access to those customers. So there are a lot of different channels. We talked a lot about mobile uh, with, with the Split Metrics team just a few minutes ago, and mobile is a critical channel, especially now with people on the go. It's very real time in most cases. Everyone has their phone. I have my phone everywhere I go. I constantly have it with me. Most people are the same way. So there are a lot of different channels that you can think about just to engage your users um, on mobile specifically. There are push notifications. There's in-app messages. So if you have the um, an app and you want to be able to send them messages, think of it as almost like a direct way to keep people engaged while they're in your app. There's also features like app inbox, which are um, more like an in an email inbox, but for your for your app as well. Then of course there's chat apps available. WhatsApp is a big one in Europe um, and in other parts of the world. It's starting to become more popular in North America. SMS and MMS, those are other you know, messaging capabilities. Um, email is a traditional multi-channel. I think everyone on this line has an email marketing strategy at place. It's something that companies have been doing for years and years and years. I don't see that going away. It's just as important of a channel as these other ones. Uh, web, so thinking about web personalization. So as you acquire new users, you may want to think about how they're engaging with you, but also what are they looking at on the website? Because that could help fuel some of the content and direction you have as part of your personalization strategy. Maybe you want to show them a specific banner that will help push them down the funnel or help them convert later on, depending on where they are in that journey. And then, of course, there's, I think, more advanced capabilities now with, with voice, OTT devices, wearable technologies. In any case, you want to make sure you have access to where your customers are. So we don't ever suggest that you should adopt all of these channels at once. You want to make sure that you're doing it in a way that aligns with your strategy. So look at maybe some of the acquisition data that you have. Where are you acquiring customers from? And then where are your customers engaging? And that's how you can think about prioritizing those channels for engagement based on where you have the most amount of users. And then continue to add channels over time based on where you're seeing that engagement progress. So part of having a really great engagement strategy is also making sure you have a good segmentation strategy. 
So when we think about how to segment our users, whether you are a company that has 100 customers or you're a company that has millions of customers, you need to think about segmentation um, as a means of connecting with the right people and the right message at the right time. And so we always ask these kinds of questions to our audiences. The first, when you're thinking about segments, is you want to make sure they're identifiable. If you have very clear criteria for defining a segment, maybe by a specific demographic or behavioral attributes, it'll make it easier for you to create an engagement strategy and content that aligns with that segment. So let's think about like a loyalty program. If you're a company that has a loyalty program and maybe you have um, your premium loyalty status, top tier status, but then you also have users that may have just joined. You may want to treat them differently. You may want to provide specific offers or incentives to those loyal users that have been with you for years. Compared to the new users, maybe the content that you might want to share with them is more onboarding related, making sure that they have all the information they need to keep them sticky, especially if they're you know, just downloading an app and they're just using it for the first time. So you would want to segment these people differently because they have different content that you would want to share with them. The next step is, is the size substantial. So you do want to make sure that your segments are large enough to make your efforts worthwhile, especially if you're a small team or if you have limited resources. You want to make sure that you're communicating with segments that have a lot of similar interests and thinking about how big they are. If you have a segment of one person, that may not require a multi-touch engagement campaign. That may just require some one-off outreach if you wanted to engage them separately. But if you have a very large audience side that falls into a segment, it would probably... Um, warrant the fact that you would want to treat them differently. And then are they differentiated? So sometimes, um, especially for the marketers on, on the line, you may have segments of people where they fall into different segments and they overlap a little bit. So you may have someone, um, if we're thinking about the loyalty example, you may have someone who's a premium loyalty user, but they also might be a part of another segment, maybe based on content or product or adoption that you may have. And so just make sure that when you are looking at your segmentation strategy that you can try to avoid as many overlaps as possible because what you wouldn't want to have happen is have um, the challenge of sending too many or too few messages, but then also making sure that the messaging strategy isn't overlapping or conflicting too much. And then the last step is just, are they actionable? So if you are creating a really good segmentation strategy, you should have in theory what communications you would plan to share with those audiences. So make sure that when you are building your segmentation strategy, it sounds very obvious, but that you would actually have a long-term plan for these segments down the road. And so step four is focusing on personalization. And this is something that, again, you know, people really are keen to get ahead of, but it's hard, especially as you scale. So this is um, just, you know, some stages that we often see. Marketing personalization does take time. So you may be at stage one, you may be at stage four, you may be doing a combination of stage two and stage three. It's all about your own journey based on your own goals. But this is just a methodology that we sometimes will recommend to customers Focus first on, you know, personalizing on one channel, making sure that you're thinking about different attributes like content optimization, or maybe you want to personalize based on geolocation because you have a really large segment of people in one particular city or town. Um, that could be a one approach. You could also think about, you know, moving from a rules-based segmentation where you do have these different segments of people to more behavioral-based or dynamic segmentation, which would allow you to be a little more automated in your approach. And it also helps you become more repeatable with how you're segmenting your audiences. You could also think about growing as you add on more channels. So, you know, starting small, working your way up, or you could think about, you know, unified customer profile. Right now, this is in stage three, but if you have a lot of data a lot of channels today, maybe you want to make that your stage one focus, really make sure that you have the right foundation for your unified profile before you add on other channels. So this is more up to you. But when you're thinking about how to really scale multi-channel, you want to think about the different attributes that you can personalize, but also the different channels that you're going to be engaging on, and then putting in a strong foundation with your segmentation strategy to be able to make that actionable. And step five, lastly, is the AI optimization. So AI has become a a key, I think, um, uh, specific feature that a lot of marketing technology tools have today. And it's because we want to make marketers' lives easier. And so there are a lot of ways to do that so that you're not sifting through data and spreadsheets, but you're really relying on the technology to surface up those insights. And so thinking about being able to personalize based on the best time of day, maybe you have certain segments that are always 
opening up your email on Wednesdays at 10 a.m. So thinking about that as a way that technology can fuel those decisions for you. And then thinking about best channel. So maybe you have people who are engaged on push, other people engaged on email. Don't feel like you have to segment them differently, message them differently. Let AI help you with those, those decisions. Same thing with messages. Do some multivariate testing with control groups. And then obviously best device too comes into play. And so with AI, you can really create a customer journey that's orchestrated. And so this is what it would look like on the back end, but you would be able to create messages in different paths and a mix of touch points across paid sources and organic sources. And as people go through those paths, based on some of the data that you've learned about these individuals and common segments that you have, you can let AI do this for you, where you're able to create a journey that's most relevant to that user based on that point in time. And there are also tools for AI like RFM analysis. This is recency, frequency, and monetary analysis if you're not familiar with it. So thinking about scaling personalization, being able to have dynamic segmentation for you. So you may have people who are very price sensitive and they may be in a category in themselves. Hibernating is an example. Like I, I personally, for Black Friday in the US, I'm always shopping. I'd have a lot of sales, but there are vendors that I buy from that I never buy from again throughout the year. So I'd be considered a hibernating customer and you would want to market to me differently. And these are all things that AI can do for you on the back end if you have the right marketing technology partner. And so just um, to be mindful of time, I wanted to actually walk through a couple of customer stories because I always think it's helpful to, to learn through a customer and how they're thinking about multi-channel engagement. So this is OneWeather and um, they are one of the, the top weather apps. And so their personalization strategy and engagement strategy is very simple. They care about the weather and they care about where people live and they wanna educate people where they live, what the weather is. Very simple goal in mind for their app. And so, you know, when it comes to their strategy, they're being able to send push notifications and um, suggestions on what to wear based on the weather. And just by doing that simple personalization based on geolocation, they were able to see higher um, click-through rates as well as higher session duration for their users. This next example is a little more sophisticated. So Coco Melody is a, a retailer, both online as well as in stores. They have some locations throughout Europe, the US and Asia. And um, Coco Melody sells bridal wear. So they sell brides dresses, they sell bridesmaids dresses and accessories. And for them, they were acquiring a lot of users through paid channels, but what they soon realized was that after a while, their paid users weren't converting. So they were trying to look at ways where they could get more engagement and more conversion from the acquisition model that they put in place. And so they ended up deploying a um, customer journey approach, as well as a, um, a program on around how about personalized content based on where people were in that journey. And so I'll just go to the next slide. So for them, they have mobile, they have email, they have personalized web messages. This is just an example of how they're thinking about personalization. They may have someone who's looking at specific products and being able to trigger an email notification based on the product that they were looking for, and also being able to trigger unique offers based on where people are. Maybe they've added a dress to their cart, but they haven't purchased it yet. So this is something that at the exact same moment this email was sent, but it's completely different messages to two different users. And so they're really letting technology fuel those decisions for them based on where people are in their decision process, just to try to um, push them towards purchase, but also repurchase. So you can imagine with a, a bride's dress, you're not buying a many of these, right? But if you did just purchase a dress, maybe you need some accessories and they can start to promote related products like veils or tiaras or even supplemental products like bridesmaids dresses. If the bride just purchased their dress, they're likely going to be looking for other products that are similar to that. And then in terms of their journey strategy, just to bring that automated image to life that I had just shared, they had one specific campaign they focused on initially. It was the try at home campaign because with bride, bridal wear, it's not only a longer term purchase, but it's also a very emotional one. And so they recognize that if people are buying bride's dresses online, that they may not 
convert as quickly. They may want to see the dress. They may want to touch the dress. They want to know what it looks like. And so they did a try at home campaign. It was $25. You try the dress at home. You can send it back if it doesn't work or you buy the dress if it does. And they had a multi-step customer journey orchestration trigger campaign fueled by AI that allowed them to trigger the right message at the right channel for each individual based on who has enrolled in this campaign. And so this has really helped their own sales category and not only fueling conversion for all of their acquired users, but also thinking about how they've been able to gather insights on these users because they are starting to adopt more channels and view more content throughout that journey. So another example for any media and entertainment customers, this one is AudioMac. And they are a music streaming service. And so for them, onboarding is very important. They, are, they have a freemium model. They do allow for premium subscriptions. And they really wanted to optimize those conversions. And for anyone who did sign up for an account, start to onboard them in the right way. Because for them, they really need to make sure people are consistently using the app, logging in, listening to music. That's how they are successful. And so they really focused on leveraging machine learning and AI to start to understand certain music genres that people care about so that they could personalize song recommendations, artist recommendations. As people were listening to music, they were able to trigger those behavioral based um, content suggestions to help fuel more engagement. And so this was very much around, you know, sequences of um, songs, the conversion rates for songs, as well as listening metrics. And so they were able to leverage AI to help fuel some of this messaging for them to really start to engage some of their user base. And so here's just a couple examples of some different types of songs. So with a customer engagement strategy, they were able to start to get an understanding of people's preferences. What, what types of songs do they care about? How long are they listening for? Um, what type of music do they care about? Are they sharing that music with anyone? And they were able to leverage that play data to be able to provide very tailored messaging journeys throughout um, the life cycle of the customer just to continue to drive up the engagement from those users that they acquired. And so I know that that was a lot. Um, so just if you aren't familiar with Mo Engage, we, we are a partner and we're an insights-led customer engagement platform helping brands around the world be able to not only get insights on their users, but also engage with them across channels. Here's just some of our office locations and some of our awards and recognition. And we do help brands provide a 360 degree view of the customer. So if you do have data that's fragmented, you have a lot of different tools. We're not looking to replace any of those tools, but we're looking to help you bring in that data so that you can start to understand some of those components um, that are important to be able to personalize. And then we do also provide the omni-channel experience. So as you focus on one or two channels today, and as you grow to maybe five or six channels or more, we'd be able to help you scale that strategy. And that is all I have. I'm going to give it back to David. Um, thank you all for having me again today. Megan, well, everybody, just before we go into obviously the poll here, can I just get a number one to chat for obviously our speakers here? An amazing, amazing webinar. Thank you very, very much. Very, very insightful. Um, thank you very, very much, Megan, Maxime, and Karina. Um, I got a lot out of that today. So really, really appreciate it. So we're going to have a poll and look at the poll results. So can the team bring up the poll results, please? Okay. Multi-channel customer engagement. Yeah. Okay. So the winner, winner, chicken dinner of this one is identifying the best messaging, frequency, and channel. Okay. 50% um, close second. But um, yeah, listen, guys, really good. Thank you very much. Okay. So. We've got a couple of minutes left. We've got seven minutes left, ladies and gents. Okay, so we're not finished yet. What we're going to do is um, we are going to go into a couple of questions um, that we have. And I just want to say, first and foremost, before we do, thank you very much for the presentations. Megan, Maxime, and Karina, thanks for your time. Really, really, really appreciate it, okay? So, look, if we don't answer all the questions um, in the chat, what will happen is our experts will get back to you with the answers, okay, through email. Also, this 
uh, session has been recorded and it will be shared with the whole audience um, as well. We've got a lot of participants in here as well. So don't worry about that. You won't miss out on anything. No problem at all. Okay. First question we're going to go into. Maxim, it's for you. When is the right time to start doing paid ads? Okay, got you. Do you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Nice, nice, nice. Um, right time, yes. Um, <laughs> the right time yeah. to start buying buying user. I think that that, that the very time, the, the, that very moment that when you publish that, and then understood that the level of organic traffic wouldn't help you uh, achieve some kind of success. Uh, understand me uh, so based on my experience um, you shouldn't rely only on the organic traffic uh, I think the perfect combo is always um, use paid traffic paid ads um, in cooperation with organic traffic and ASO uh, therefore uh, it's better to think in, in advance about um, creating uh, appropriate strategy uh, think uh, about uh, how to attract by traffic for your definite app. So I hope I call uh, the question. Yeah, did indeed. Yeah, we're getting some obvious responses there. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for the context and the answer there. Okay. Megan, next one is for you. If you're just um, starting with multi channel personalization, how should you begin? Yeah, it's a good question. Um... Because I think it really depends on some of your goals. So um, when it comes to multi-channel personalization, I had shown that one slide where you had the different stages. So if you are already doing a lot of multi-channel marketing, you may want to think about connecting your audiences across these different channels if you haven't already. And that could be that starting point for you so that you can start to think about, okay, these are my audiences. This is what they care about. This is the content they're engaging on across these channels. Thinking about the frequency piece over messaging, you want to try to avoid it. Um, that could be one avenue. If you don't have a lot of engagement channels in place, maybe you're acquiring paid users and you're just focused on, you know, some, some social, some email, then you may want to take a channel approach and try to really get one channel right and personalizing content for that one channel before you add on additional channels. So you could either take one of those two approaches or, you know, just look at some of the data that you have and try to focus your strategy on where you're seeing the most impact. Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you very much, Megan. Appreciate that. And um, we've got time for one last question and we are going to go to Karina for this last question. Okay. How much time and budget do you need to understand that a channel is worth your efforts? Yeah, it's actually a great one because I hear a lot from my clients in question, like uh, how to start, how much budget should I need for that? But I can say that there is no kind of common uh, logic behind uh, calculating the budgets or something because you definitely need to treat uh, to treat uh, each and every channel separately. And it means if we're speaking about the timelines, like you definitely need to take into account this learning phase and you should allocate the testing budget. It means that it, your KPIs can be uh, far from what you expected, but you definitely need to test the channel. Yes, you, and for sure, timelines they are uh, connected with budget you have yeah because just to speed up the process you definitely need to put more testing budget yeah and for example you can tell the channel within one month uh, but it depends on the markets as well so if you'd like to go worldwide so you definitely need a lot of budget for each and every market for each and every channel so that's why just wrapping this up you definitely need to Think over your KPIs, your channel goals, uh, the channel peculiarities, as I mentioned, like learning phase as well, yeah, because sometimes you need just uh, to get data to the machine to start uh, working, like uh, ML, for example. And definitely then you need to start making database decision about cutting the budget or scaling the budget and so on. Yeah. And so yeah. hope I addressed. Yeah. Yeah, great answer. Really, really good answer. Um, and thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so look, listen, I want to thank everybody for their participation today. It's been very, very exciting. So look, listen, I hope today has brought you lots of education and insights around obviously multi-channel mobile marketing and strategies for 2023. Huge, huge thanks to Megan um, from Mo Engage and the rest of the guys 
and girls from Split Metrics. You know, please feel free to get in touch with the speakers, you know, via email. Um, and you can see that on the screen there as well. And obviously also across LinkedIn too, you know, I'm sure the speakers are more than happy to answer your questions. Uh, but most importantly, you know, um, this wouldn't be possible without the participation of our audience as well. So audience, thank you very, very much for your participation today. Listen, guys and girls, um, thank you very, very much again. Megan, Maxine and Karina did a fantastic job. Great insights. Have a beautiful week, everybody. And have a beautiful day. Thanks for joining. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Have a great week.